What drains my energy while I'm traveling isn't necessarily the long haul flights, or the long days spent walking, or the general sleep deprivation. No, what drains my energy is anything to do with packing. The initial packing, the unpacking and repacking and checking you didn't leave anything behind at each stop you go to, or just trying to live out of your suitcase you don't want to unpack when your suitcase gets all messy. And of course, the massive unpack when you get home. I don't like packing. I'm not into it, okay? And what's also not a great time is having to lug a big, heavy suitcase around. There is something so satisfying about the freedom of going away and only bringing the essentials. So pretty soon I'm going to Europe for eight weeks and I've issued myself the challenge of bringing only hand luggage. No check-in. So hopefully you'll find this video useful if you're looking to pack a little bit lighter and maybe even save a little bit of money. Or if you just find it really satisfying to watch people pack things. So first up, the actual hand luggage I'm gonna bring are my Herschel Pop Quiz backpack, blue, and my Antler Viva hard case also blue. Now this little suitcase is really lightweight. It's only 2.7 kilos before you put stuff in it. <laughs> and it's also the maximum dimensions that you can fit in the overhead storage locker on a plane. Very conveniently, almost like they designed it that way. Also worth noting, my friend got me a set of these super convenient collapsible folding cube organizer things for suitcases. And the Herschel Pop Quiz backpack is fantastic. I've been using Herschel backpacks for years and I use them for everything. Work, gym, uni, when I went to uni. Although I know places like Bellroy also have really great bags. I've been using Herschel for longer and I don't have any reason to swap. It's got a fleece lined laptop sleeve at the back which can fit up to my 16 inch MacBook Pro really easily. I mean, really easily. It fits snugly, but it's fine. It's got another fleece lined little zip pocket at the top, which is made for sunglasses, uh, which I do keep in there, but I also keep my AirPods in there and anything I want to be able to access really easily. It's got a large main pocket and it's got two zips at the front, the larger of which also has a bunch of smaller sized organizer pockets inside. So I did my first practice pack yesterday and I was actually quite nervous that not everything would fit, but much to my surprise, everything fit with room to spare. But just because everything fits doesn't mean it's going to be under the weight limit. But it seems fairly standard that most airlines give you an eight kilogram piece of carry-on luggage, plus a small personal item, which just has to fit under the seat in front of you. But make sure you're booking the right ticket because most of these in Europe flights have different levels of economy class and the base ones for a lot of them are just one personal item no carry-on luggage. So you, you often have to sort of get the ticket above that. So speaking of, other benefits of bringing only carry-on luggage include not having to pay extra for check-in baggage. Because you can find some really cheap tickets within Europe, but then you may end up paying twice as much once you add on your check-in baggage. Also packing and unpacking and repacking stuff, it always takes way too long. Less stuff, less time wasted doing that nonsense. It is also significantly less likely that you're gonna lose your stuff in transit, unless of course you accidentally leave your stuff on the plane. And also, you don't have to wait for your luggage when you get to your destination. You don't have to crowd around the luggage conveyor belt thing with all those other people trying to spot your suitcase amongst the sea of suitcases. You can just grab your stuff from the overhead locker, be on your way, grab a bus or taxi before everyone else comes out all at once because they're all still stuck at the baggage conveyor belt. Chumps. Now, I do of course acknowledge that there are some things which make this easier for me. I'm going in European summer, so a lot of the things that I pack can be lighter. If I was going in winter, I'd have to bring multiple pairs of pants, probably multiple jumpers, a big heavy jacket. But in summer, everything is a lot lighter, so I don't need to worry nearly as much about my weight limit. I'm not somebody who wears makeup, and overall, this doesn't take a lot of upkeep. I know surprising. But depending on how much makeup you use, that can take up a lot of space in your luggage and can probably be quite heavy too. I only take one type of medication and I can fit two months worth of it in quite a small box. But this may not be feasible for some people who need to pack like multiple types of medication or things over 100 milliliters. So what I'm packing. So let's talk about clothes. Something which is really going to help me keep my total number of packing items down is the concept of a capsule wardrobe. I've wanted to get into the capsule wardrobe game for quite a long time, but I don't exactly have the best grounding for this, like for this. <laughs> I don't have the best sense of fashion. I hate shopping. 
and I just didn't even know where to start. But this Euro trip is, I think, a really good opportunity to give it a bit of a trial. Here's a relevant quote from Travel Fashion Girl. Versatility is key. Three shirts and three pants should yield nine outfits, not three. Every shirt should match every pair of pants so that you can maximize your number of outfits while minimizing what you pack. So you'll see in a second that pretty much everything from the bottom half, my shorts, my pants, are black, so that's pretty straightforward. But let's start off with the top half of the bod. So I'm going to bring three t-shirts with me, possibly four, but I think I should be able to get away with three. Hi, future me, back from Europe, and um, I could not get away with three. Three was a pipe dream. I brought four with me to begin with, and then I ended up buying an extra two over there. Um, and left a shirt behind actually. Anyway, there was a sale, doesn't matter. I got quite sweaty because it was quite hot. It was like high 30s, early 40s for a lot of the time I was there. And surprisingly, the shirts got sweaty and I wanted to change my shirts every day. Didn't want to get back into a sweaty shirt. So yeah, five is probably a lot more reasonable and they'll still fit in the suitcase. So yeah, do five. Anyway, back to the video. This is an As Color Classic tee and they are very comfortable. It's actually a, just a lighter version of the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. And then I've got a black and white striped t-shirt and a blue t-shirt, both from Zara. I'll also bring this Gymshark singlet for exercise and also just as an extra top if I need it. I'm starting off my trip in Greece in summer, so it's probably going to be quite hot and a singlet will come in handy. I'll also be bringing this really casual singlet from Disneyland, which I'll probably just sleep in most of the time. But if by some chance I manage to dirty all three of my t-shirts and my other singlet, I can use this one as just a day-to-day -day singlet for public as well. I'm only going to bring one jumper as it's European summer, so I'm going to bring this hoodie from H&M. It's this really nice purple colour and I'm going to wear this on the plane. I'm going to bring this one shirt with me, which kind of has this crinkled sort of fabric to it anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it gets crushed in my suitcase. The good thing about this shirt is that I feel like I can wear it casually with a pair of shorts, or I can dress it up a little bit if I wear my pants and some nicer shoes. I could go out to dinner like this, yeah? Bottom half. So, these are the one pair of pants that I'm taking away with me. Just a plain pair of black pants, again from Zara, but they're very stretchy, they're very comfortable, but I feel like they're also a little bit classier than denim. Trackies, or tracksuit pants, or joggers, or whatever you call them wherever you're from. Trackies are always a travel essential for me. This particular pair are Gymshark, and I really love the olive green colour. They're great for things like moseying around the house and also exercise, but in an emergency, you can also use them as a backup pair of pants. Also, they're just really comfortable for planes. Who wants to sit in jeans for over 20 hours? No one, no thanks. Of course, they are green, so they're not the best match for the rest of the stuff. So like, you know, if I was being real capsule wardrobe -y, I'd probably have a pair of black trackies or dark gray or something that would go with everything. But trackies aside, I'm much more likely to spend most of my time in shorts during this trip because it's going to be hot. So I've got this pair of shorts from Common Need. I have historically gotten by with just wearing sport shorts. And at my age, I'm like, okay, time to grow up a little bit. I feel like these are a little bit more versatile than just sports shorts like active wear. They're a little bit classier is what I'm trying to say. And they go with all the tops that I'm bringing. And I will be bringing a pair of board shorts. I've got these purple quick dry shorts from Speedo and you can also use them as a casual pair of shorts in a pinch. I will of course also be bringing my Gymshark shorts. These are super lightweight. They are super comfortable. I think they're gonna come in very handy for all the walking and hiking I'm gonna be doing. So I'm going to bring nine pairs of underwear and nine pairs of socks eight in the suitcase and then the pair that I'll be wearing. I've heard people say that you can do any length trip on seven pairs of undies, but I like to have a little bit of a safety net because I feel like you can wear the same socks two days in a row, but do you want to wear the same jocks two, pair, two days in a row? Two pairs in a row? Mm, you know. If you're going away for 60 days, you don't need to pack 60 days worth of clothes. Instead, make sure that you have access to a washer and dryer where possible. Footwear. This one was actually quite difficult because I'm going to be doing a fair bit of hiking in Albania and Norway. Like my friends and I are literally going on a hiking tour for five days solid. So I thought, should I bring hiking boots? But for the rest of the time in the trip, hiking boots seem like overkill. And I don't think that the hiking is going to be that intense that I really need hiking boots. Do you need to come in and save you? <laughs> <laughs> but 
But for the rest of the time in the trip, hiking boots seemed like overkill, particularly because it's summer. I mean, if it was winter and it, there was snow and rain all the time. So I ended up deciding that I'm just gonna bring my regular Nike Infinity Run 2 shoes. They are really comfortable. So they should be good for long days of walking as well as hikes, hopefully. <laughs> I've also got these new shoes. I got them for half price because they were the last size in stock and they just happened to be exactly my size. So these are veggies or vias or veyas. But these can be used both casually and to dress things up a little bit. Like if I was going out to a restaurant, I feel like it's much more appropriate to wear the veyas than it is to wear the Nikes. I'm actually thinking it might finally be time for me to join the Birkenstocks bandwagon. And I am tempted to buy a pair of Birks in Germany but we'll see if they'll fit in my suitcase. In terms of socks, I love the ones with the extra padding at the bottom, particularly, again, if you're doing a lot of walking or running. Bonds does some really great socks. Bonds is an Australian brand, but I highly recommend them to everyone. The sports style socks from Bonds are both quite padded at the bottom and quite breathable, so if you get sweaty feet, they're really good for that. Same with their undies. I buy only Bonds underwear because Bonds underwear is very light, very breathable, very comfortable material. Get the microfiber ones or the sports style ones. That's good stuff. Other stuff, miscellaneous. So I'm also gonna be packing my gym towel because I'm under the delusional belief that I'm going to make it to the gym while I'm overseas. But it's really lightweight and it's very small. It's practically nothing, so it's not a big deal to bring it along. My water and windproof North Face jacket. This thing is so good for keeping dry, at least keeping your top half dry. And again, although it's summer, it's Europe, so there's a good chance that it'll at least rain or be very windy. A beanie, some sunglasses, I always buy fairly cheap sunglasses as long as they are polarized because I have a tendency to forget them and leave them places and I don't want to waste my money. But that being said, I've had this pair for over a year, so maybe it's time that I'm responsible enough for a nice pair of sunnies. Hello, future me, just jumping in quickly while editing. I am definitely not responsible enough to buy a new proper pair of sunglasses because I somehow managed to lose those sunglasses somewhere between packing them and going to the airport. So as soon as I got to Greece, I had to buy a new pair of sunnies, which I promptly scratched. So yeah, nah. And finally, this turtle cap. I believe the brand is Follow Your Legend. My friend got it for me and it's got a little chip in the rim and you can scan that with your phone. And essentially it tells you about the turtles that they sponsor with the profits from the hats. In terms of electronics, I'm gonna be bringing my iPad and Magic Keyboard case, AirPods Pro second generation, my Nintendo Switch, and something I'm very excited about, this Snap Power Pack Universal. So here's the stuff I'm gonna have in my backpack on the plane. Change of undies and socks and a change of t-shirts. I'm gonna be spending over a day traveling between Melbourne to London and then Greece. It takes 22 hours just to get to London from Melbourne. So I always bring a change of clothes so I can freshen up halfway there. And the other thing too about having an extra set in your backpack is if your luggage does go astray, you still have a backup pair of underwear. So you have the essentials on you. I'll also bring along my gym shorts because they're super lightweight, but also incredibly comfortable. So if it gets too hot in my tracksuit pants, I'll just change to my shorts. I've got my Camelback leak-proof water bottle, which holds one liter of liquid, and I'll be sure to empty before I go through security and before they weigh my bags. On the topic of freshening up, I'm also gonna bring along my toothpaste, toothbrush, and deodorant. And I'll keep some other things in my backpack too, like spare hair ties, pawpaw ointment for those dry lips, moisturizer for that dry face, nasal spray, because I have allergies, and finally, my puffer slash inhaler, which I probably won't need and I've hardly ever needed in my adult life, but it's best to have it than have an asthma attack and not to have it. And they're in a transparent bag because that's what the airport likes. In this pocket, I've also got some wet wipes for freshening up. And then in the little front zip, I've got Panadol and Nurofen, Band-Aids, as well as a couple of classic face masks and half of my medication. And I'll keep the other half in my suitcase so if I happen to lose one or the other, I don't lose all my medication at once and end boned. In the laptop sleeve at the back, I'm going to have my 11 inch iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard and my Nintendo Switch. I managed to get one of these official Apple Magic Keyboards on eBay, brand new for half the regular price. 
which is still quite expensive. These things, in my opinion, are insanely overpriced, but they are very good quality. They do integrate really well. And like, they're actually really nice to work with. In all likelihood, I'll be needing to Google things while I'm away. I'll be needing to organize train tickets and things like that. And I feel like it's gonna be so much easier to do on a bigger screen than on my phone screen. Also in terms of electronics, in this little travel electronics case thing, I've got a USB-C to USB-C cable. I've got a USB to lightning cable. I've got my little portable tripod because YouTube, shoulder click. I'll also have my AirPods Pro Generation 2. The last time I traveled, I didn't have noise canceling earphones. I think these are gonna be such a game changer because I'm such a light sleeper and like sound just really annoys me. And speaking of game changing, my bestie who I'm traveling with got me this Snap Universal Power Pack for my birthday. And I think this is going to be possibly the most useful thing that I bring along on my trip. So Alex, what's so great about this travel adapter? Well, it's got built-in USB-C and lightning cables, which tuck away neatly when you don't need them, as well as USB-C and USB-A port, which you can put your own chargers in, and it's also a wireless charger. As you can see from this promo pick, it can charge up to five things at once, but of course output is going to be limited because you're charging five things at once. You can use this one thing to charge all of your devices overnight while you're traveling. iPad, Nintendo Switch, phone, AirPods, don't even need the fifth one. And here's some additional product information for you tech people out there. And not only is it a portable battery, you can also plug it directly in the wall to use it for pass-through charging. So it comes built in with an American style plug, which neatly tucks away when you don't need it, but also comes with three different adapters and this handy case to store them all in. Although I'm not going to use it on the trip, way too much of my space limit will be used by this. And one last thing, a phone stand. So if you're charging your phone, you can rest it there while it's plugged in and you can watch Disney Plus, whatever you wanna watch. Finally, I will have my sunglasses in the top sunglass pocket of my backpack because that's where they always are. So yeah, that's my backpack. In my suitcase, I am packing. Casual shoes, gym towel, pajama shorts, black pants, North Face jacket, Bag for laundry, face mask thing that takes up practically no space. Six undies and six pairs of socks, or as Australians would say, six pairs of jocks, six pairs of socks. One pair of board shorts, one pair of general black shorts, two t-shirts, two singlets or vests if you're British, and a green shirt. Also a cap. And finally, Tim Tams if I can fit them without them getting destroyed in transit. And I nearly forgot the power adapters for my Snap Power Pack and the toiletries I'm not bringing with me in my backpack. So in here, I'm going to have small tubes of shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and leave-in conditioner, as well as sunscreen. And then on the plane, I'm going to wear Smooth transition, I'm sure. And on my feet, I will wear my Nike Infinity Runs 2. So much better than the Infinity Runs 3. And of course, I'll be wearing one of my tees, maybe this gray one, because it is very comfortable. So I'm back from Europe. I got back yesterday morning at 5 a.m. I'm a little bit out of it, a little bit jet lagged. But let me just say that packing only hand luggage was definitely the right decision. And I'll be endeavoring to do so on all future trips. It went very well. The ease of carrying this around Europe compared to a big ass case, so much easier. It made getting around on planes and trains so much smoother. And I took a lot of planes and trains because I went to 12 different countries in the eight weeks that I was there. So overall, success. So that's it. That's how I'm packing for an eight week trip to Europe using only hand luggage. I hope that helps you with your own packing efforts and you're able to take away some useful information. Please hit that face to subscribe to the channel or check out another video here. If you're new here, I generally do minimalist content on this channel, although sometimes I do things relating to lifestyle, life hacks, and I really like to move into travel. So this video is a bit of a combination of all of those things. If you're not new here, you're aware that it's been a hot minute since I've put anything on this channel. Surprise, I'm back. I've 
got a bit distracted getting a job and working, um, which isn't really an excuse because some people are doctors and they still manage to YouTube. I don't know how the hell they do that. Uh, but I've also been distracted making content for my other channel, which is all about gaming. But thank you to everyone who has subscribed in the last year or so when I've hardly uploaded anything. Let me know if there are any videos that you would like to see. Subscribe, like, comment, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.